Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. We have here an envelope containing some Spectrum bits from Cool Novelties, price of £13.28 for RGB cable and a tape uh, drive repair thingy thing thing. Just have a quick look inside. Ooh, glad I was a bit more careful with my blade than usual because that is something you could certainly cut through quite easily. Spectrum 128 plus 2A, Amstrad 464. Mm. Coolnovelties.co.uk. But I'm more interested in the RGB lead because RGB leads, of course, can differ in their quality. Look at that RGB to SCART connection. Looks plenty long. I'm not going to measure that, but yeah, plenty long. But always open up the back shell. Have a little looksy, 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 looksy inside. See what's in there, because often, often there's additional components required, like resistors and whatnot. Mmm. Yeah. Looks like everything appears to be in order. Various bits of heat shrink. Can't quite tell what's under the heat shrink, but it could be resistors. Yeah, it feels bumpy and lumpy. There's a lot of work goes into that, really, isn't it? If you think about it, there's a lot of connections there. Quite a lot of heat shrink, quite a lot of jumpers. That's good. So for the price of sort of £10.79, I'm more than happy to pay it. It's really... Uh, I know certain people do make their own cables, but which is good luck to them. If you've got the time and the uh, patience to do it, everybody's got to have a hobby. But for me... I'm quite happy with cool novelties. So that's good. And I got their Atari ST cable last time, so very pleased. But today we're not really doing an unboxing or unbagging or un whatever because I want to do something with this pad. And that is do, 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 replace the belt on this Spectrum Plus 2. So that's the part right there. And the belt is for here. I actually haven't tried this. This might be fine. But, you know, I just want to go belt and brace it. I don't want to sort of fire this up and then to discover that there's a problem. So you might catch in my other video where I actually just unbox this. You can see I've got it at a reasonable price and it's in reasonably good nick. I just don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to attack it with my screwdriver. I'm hoping it's just these obvious screws. I don't really fancy digging around underneath these rubber feetses because, of course, ooh, firmer than I expected because of course I don't want to disrupt those there we go bit of talk we're done it's never been opened can you imagine this looks like it's never been opened in years and years and years and years and years so we're gonna have the uh, opportunity while we're here to sort of have a look underneath the hood and see what's there of course they do run off the Zilog Z80 processor. But that's about it, really. I do know that they have some sort of audio chip, which is somewhat similar to what was used later in the Atari STs and things. So the sound in the Atari ST and stuff wasn't that fantastic. Whoa, okay. First things first. There's a ribbon cable here, which is clearly the keyboard one. And I'm going to be very careful. Just bear with me a moment. Ah, it's like made out of tissue paper. I'll show you that in a moment. I need to retrieve all these screws. That's going to be a... one more connector. There we go. So, right. Let me put this aside for a moment. Let's just retrieve all our screws. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws we want to end up with, and there they are. Let's get those in a pile. And I do have a screw holding area on my board here, so the screws can go in there. Can't see them though, because they're camouflaged. Camo screws. So that basically is the bottom. And that's everything, that's pretty damn impressive. I'm just, I mean, you could hear that, I was just actually crunching these down, pushing these down. So those are the two keyboard ribbon connectors. That appears to be a reset switch because it's momentary. Joystick ports, some sort of audio port. Mm, that's the video port, that's the RF port. That, I don't know. And these ones are sort of serial MIDI, one something else, and then your expansion buttons. But look, 
it's a proper 1988 Amstrad because of course the plus two was when Amstrad had already bought Sinclair. So when we fire this up eventually, it will probably tell us it's an Amstrad. And look, there's that Zilog Z80, the heart of the machine. But I'm, I'm really impressed because I had the original Spectrum and it had loads of like um, heat sinks and a big old lump of metal, but there's none of that in here. So obviously by the time that Alan Sugar got to this, they'd sort of worked out a lot of the uh, ways of making it run a bit better clearly, or possibly some of these chips have become more efficient. So let's have a look at what chips we have and I can kind of just about enough room to turn it this way. So there's your Zilog Z80 CPU. So that's the brains are there. Look at this thing. It's actually an Amstrad chip, an 8820 TDH. Mm, some sort of custom chip and another one. Look at that, an 8820. So these, uh, these are doing something. They could be ROMs. Again, don't quite know. I could be looking up data sheets for you, but I know you like to play along at home. Various controllers. These are on those sort of serially port things, so they're probably some sort of comms controller. Uh, this might be the sound chip. This is a, an AY38912A. But I'm I'm quite fascinated with something I'm I'm seeing on the board. And can you guess it's this guy here? Look at that. That is a very interesting chip. And I'm not going to sort of undo the whole PCB just to get that out, but look how it's mounted. It's it's almost it's like one of those quad pack QFL type surface mount chips, but it's mounted through the PCB upside down. Very, very interesting. Very probably a way of saving money, basically. Again, what other chips do we have here? Here we have an 8822B, one, two, and then 8821s, two of those. And that's about it, really. Just a modulator in the corner. Aztec, who make basically modulators for everything. If you look at any machine of that sort of era, you'll find their chips in there. But that's good, that's fine. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of hardware hacking in this, because I've got some of these boards. So I'm probably gonna try to integrate these somewhere. Gotta be careful, just looking as a tape player goes here. Got space kind of here, the tape drive controllers here. So if you're mounting anything, you're probably gonna have to shove it in somewhere. Give myself some USB and high speed data comms. But that is a project for another day. First of all, I'd quite like to just get this working. So assuming that is working, there's the other end, the top side. That's the keyboard connectors. And look at that. You've got a really good chance of knackering those if you're not careful. <sighs> Let's just blow out the, the dust. And look, this is my gentleman's sort of suit brush, but that seems to work quite well. Oh, I've sort of seen something that looks really slack. Look at this. <laughs> this is the uh, bit that we're here to replace, of course, which is the tape drive, um, the tape drive belt. Um, yeah. Before we do that though, let's just have a quick look at this sort of PCB that sort of surrounds it here. Get it all in. Nice looking PCB. Interesting style. It's definitely cheaper than the rest, but I guess it has to be. And there's the sort of control to it. It's probably really quite simple. It's probably just literally power, which will be a couple of those, and then the write data and the read data. I, I can't, because all of the actual, um, I don't know what you call this, transport is manual, you know, you're pushing record and playing all these things manually. It doesn't really need to do much other than just start and stop. Something here there, there's a mechanism, what's that? Oh, that's the record button. So the record button pushes something on this PCB that obviously lets it know it's in record mode. And these are just audio things that are going to the head. So it's super simple, it's a really nice simple board. There's your black and red that's just going to the motor, so that's just controlling everything. So, Oh yeah, I think we sometimes forget the elegance really of some of these these sorts of analog systems. And there's a PCB just in there tucked in. You can't quite see it, though. I might get a little hand light one day just to show you. You know, I can show you things up close. But that's just the LED on the case. So let's look at this belt scenario here. So that's the belt, and yeah, it's a bit. You can hear it doesn't sound great, but that might not be the belt sound. I mean, if we just undo the belt, take it off, that's just the sound of it in general. But that's probably the problem right there. Do you see it there? There's a big old kink here. That's not going to be good because it'll go whack, 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 and that's going to mess up our recordings. Looking at the replacement belt though from Cool Novelties, it does seem maybe just that a tiny bit thinner but I guess it doesn't matter. It's this sort of diameter that matters. If you put a belt that's too small, you might get away with it 
for a while but you'll put pressure on the bearings and that's going to be bad news for your unit in the sort of long run and bad news for you because where are you going to get spares for that? Nowhere. So if you can see just there again, no it might not be too clear, again I have to get myself a torch, there's a groove in there and that's where the belt is going to go and in fact bear with me, let me just get you a light. Haha! -ha! I said it like as if I don't have lights, but I clearly do. I've got millions of them. So if, if my camera will kindly focus, you can see in there there's the groove that we're trying to get into, just that black one there. So make sure I have the correct belt, which is that one. I'm going to put the old belt in the bag. Perhaps that'll be a good spare one day. In fact, I'll pop all that in the Spectrum box and uh, know what it was I replaced it with. Maybe write the date when I replaced it. It's easy to forget these things. So I'm just looking here sideways on. Again, bear with me. I know you probably can't see what I'm up to. And that's it. Yeah, I've got a bit of a twist in it though. I can see it's a bit twisted. So I'm just going to run it through. Yeah. I'm really not sure how accurate that needs to be really, it doesn't seem... Ah, you know what, it's going to always be twisted because it's actually a V-shaped pulley on that end. So if you look in there where my finger is, there's a V, so the belt is always going to twist that way. Uh, and then by the time it gets to the other end it's going to do the same. So I think you're pretty much... You're pretty much alright, just look out for any sort of little bit of twist. There's a little bit of pad here that's just to kind of take any fluff off that belt as it goes past. Just check that's clean too. And that's it really, the rest looks fine. So I'm just gonna give it a quick dust over. And that, my friends, is how you do the belt part. Now, if you want to sort of bear with me, I'm gonna be doing the actual putting the piece of the uh, the case back on, which could be quite interesting. So let's just see if there's any gotchas in that. Just getting that keyboard interface hooked up is gonna be tricky and not really, I might try it this way so I can show you as I do it. In fact, I'm going to put it in the order I took it apart, and that includes this big connector first. That's the tape interface and all of the interfacey stuff. Yeah, these are, are quite. These ribbons are just about long enough to get in there, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. But already, I've already sort of messed with it. They're sort of two layers, and they're sort of trying to come apart. Don't let them come apart. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. That one's fine. Top one's a bit bigger. That's not a problem at all either. Good. They all do. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just be careful when you're manoeuvring it. All good. Interestingly enough, if any of you know anything about the serial numbers, you can see the serial number there, 76039. I'd love to know any information you might have on that, what that means. There's a sticker lower down, 04. Again, does that mean anything? October 1980? No, it can't be 1984 because it's a 1988 unit. Um, hmm. You see? You see why I need some help from you? I can't even, I can't even guess as to what that would mean. Got that in there. One more screw. One more screw and we're ready. Excellent. So that's it. That's how you replace the belt. If your Spectrum's working, I've got no doubt it will continue to work now and work even better. Please uh, stay tuned uh, one of my next videos where I actually try this out and I'll try play with it properly. I wanted to really save the uh, whole trying it when you know for a time when I can actually go through and try a bunch of tapes. So I think we're ready for that. We're all prepared. Please feel free to comment down below, like and subscribe and share if you're that way inclined, and as ever, thank you for watching.